Okay. <laughs> it should be, yep. There we go. Use that. Hi, guys. January 16th, Saturday. 2021. <laughs> it is your real estate update for Saturday, the 16th. Yes, yes. We've got the uh, top five tips for investors right now, and we do have the question of the day. So let's get started. Let's go right into it, okay? Let's do that. What's number one, Lise? Well, go ahead. Number one, understanding three ways to make money in real estate. Let's see, what are they? The first way, when you're talking about investment property, the first way you make money is with cash flow, right? You collect your rents and it uh, generates cash flow. Absolutely. Number two, property appreciation. Buy it for 500, hopefully it goes up. If uh, history is any indication of that happening, it does go up. And the third way is uh, it's always in the buy. Your investment property, whether you're buying a flip property or a multifamily property, it's always in the buy. What did you buy it for? Did you get a good deal? Uh, so there's always money there on the table when you buy it. That's where you make most of your mo money's on the purchase. Absolutely. Buying below market value. Yes. So that is uh, number one. Hey, that was quick and easy, huh? Uh huh. Yep. <laughs> How about number two? You going to introduce is, number two? Uh, I got my show notes here. Cash flow versus value. <laughs> and I'm going to throw this one back to Gary. Well, let's just talk cash flow. I mean, if we want to just, there's a lot of different ways to evaluate investment properties. One way very quickly is to do gross rent multiplier. Gross rent multiplier is taking the purchase price divided by the annual total rents. Why is that important? It's, you, really, you really can't put your finger on an exact number. I mean, some areas, and depending on which part of the country you're in, they're going to be totally different. However, if we go to that specific area, and buy a specific property or looking at specific properties, they're all going to fall within a pretty close range of each other. If you take here where we live, obviously the beach, the gross rent multipliers on those properties are going to be a lot higher, which is the higher the number, the lower uh, the rents, or not the lower the rents, but the lower the return on your, on your money. So if you buy in some areas, uh, let's say undesirable areas, those rent gross, gross rent multipliers are going to be lower. So find a specific area and one you want to be. Let's evaluate the properties right around that area. And then we will get an average on that. And then we can go forward after that. I think that's probably the quickest way to say cash flow versus value would be a rent, gross, gross rent multiplier. <laughs> and if you're just buying your first investment property or your first property at at all that eventually you want to be a, uh, an investment property, then maybe you buy something that you're planning on renting. But if you're buying it owner occupied and you're going to live in it for a few years while you fix it up or while you build your equity, um, then you also get the good uh, owner occupied financing because financing on an investment property is always a little bit more expensive when it's non owner occupied. So maybe you're going to buy it uh, in an area that might not be the exact place you want to live but you want to build your equity while you live there. Absolutely, spot on. Yes, because you can go in, get the investor, or not investor, but owner occupant financing versus investor financing, which is going to be a lot more advantageous for you. You live there a year, you buy your next property. You may want to move into that, you may not. But you can see how this works. It builds upon itself. Yep. Okay, so how about number three? Number three is the golden rule of real estate <laughs> is what? Location, location, location. It's always about the location. So as Gary just touched on, that whether you're going to buy in maybe a less desirable area or like the beach, which is, of course, highly desirable, um, that's going to depend who your tenant is, too. So you always want to you know, try and lean toward the highest quality tenant that you can find, um, and that is always going to be a factor of location. Yeah, the mistake there would be to put cash flow over location. So yes, in an undesirable area, your cash flow or gross rent multiplier is going to be lower. Your cash flow is actually going to be higher. And you probably wouldn't want to live there, right? So you don't want to buy a property where you probably don't want to live. Now, there are circumstances where that would absolutely ring true. But 
high quality properties attract high quality tenants. That's all there is to it. Yeah, and the other thing, when uh, you really want to pay attention to your turnovers, because it's expensive to turn a property. So you want to also buy in a place that's a good location that you have a, a hopefully your tenants will stay longer. Because every time your tenant moves out and you have to turn that property, it costs you money. I mean, because you're going to have to paint it, carpet, repairs, maintenance, there's always something that has to be done. So the less times that you need to turn that property with a tenant, the more profitable it is for you. Yes, absolutely. The best is, you know, to get a tenant in there that stays the whole time that you own it. Wow. That doesn't happen often, but it does happen. Uh -huh. So let's hold out for the best, right? Let's right. plan for the best and expect the worst. So... I want to add one, one, one more thing to that about, about location. You know, you hear about, of course, we live in southern sunny California at the beach, so of course, highly desirable place to be and to live. Um, but people are like, oh, buy investment property in a different state. Buy it here, buy it there, it's cheaper. It's very di difficult, we think, to manage property at, uh, out of state. So we always try and encourage you to buy property within some radius of where you live, especially when you're starting out. Now, down the road, if you get, you know, good at this and you want to buy property out of state, um, we'd encourage you to buy your first one close to where you live. Yes, the, yes, that is important. And then as Lisa says, as you get better at it, more experienced, and the best uh, experience, best teacher for experience is usually some bad things. But that gives you the experience. <laughs> okay, I don't want to do that again. <laughs> learn from your mistakes. That seems to be the only way any of us do learn is from our own mistakes. Don't our parents try and tell us? Like we're trying to tell our teen are trying to help him avoid mistakes, but like any human being, you know, he wants to make his own. <laughs> yes, yes. Good, judgment, good judgment usually comes from bad judgment, so <laughs> yes, it is. Okay, number four. Maybe we are just blowing right through these. So number four is make sure you use good comparables. When you're looking at properties, and sometimes the investment properties, it's harder to find similar like properties, but make sure your comparables are current, and as equal as they can be to what you're lo you're looking at. You're absolutely right. I'd rather have one good comp, one or two good comps that was in the last two to six weeks versus, you know, let's say several comps from a year or two ago. Those really don't hold a lot of water. Now, appraisers may do different things. They're always looking for recent comps, but they have to come up with comps. So if you can find one good comp that justifies what you're paying, then that's all you need. You need one good one to hang your hat on. Right. Does that, does that work on that? Uh, yeah, I just said mentioned, but we've had some challenges in the in the market here. I'll get to in a minute with the statistics, but there haven't been a lot of properties, and we don't have a lot of investment properties around um, our area. So sometimes the comparables lately have been difficult just because the few number of uh, sales that there have been. Yeah, so it's always usually, generally speaking, uh, to buy investment properties where it's high density. That way you're going to find comps. If you find an outlier or, you know, it's going to be difficult to comp and it's probably going to be more difficult to rent. Yeah, and rents, just as a side note, are going up. Yes, rents across the nation. Been, across the U.S. Rents are going up um, and certainly in our area they are too. And hard to come by, hard to find a good rental in, mm -hmm. our, in our market for sure. In today's show, number five, lucky number five is, what is that one, Lise? Don't wait to buy. Yes. We found that people that are thinking about investing in real estate as an investment property, they're like, oh, I need to wait till I have more money down, or I have to wait till this or that. Our, our uh, advice is never wait. Um, you want to get in because you're never going to time the market. Uh, you just want to get in and stay in because what's our motto? Don't, Don't wait, wait to, to buy, buy real, real estate. estate. Buy real, real estate, estate and, and wait. wait. Yes, so. yes, yes. Don't ever put it off. Let's like say, I guess our number one absolutely resistance to buying is, hey, I'm going to wait for the market to crash or I'm going to wait for pricing to go down. Well, there's a reason prices go down and they usually go down collectively. That means they all go down together. So if you're going to wait for that, our recommendation is not to wait for that. It's just get in the market. If you're ready to buy real estate right now as an investment, now's the time to do it. Do not wait. Well, there's no way to time the market. I mean, I've been hearing, oh, the market's going to crash, the market's mm -hmm. going to crash for the last five years. 
Well, market's done nothing but go straight up. When you look at the charts and the bar graphs, the market has gone straight up. I mean, 22% year over year price uh, increase. It's just, you know, crazy. So we don't see the market crash that everyone seems to think is coming, coming yet. We see the demand for our area growing, not diminishing. That's true. Less and less housing units. Okay, that gave us through our five quick ones, right? Yep. Okay. Hey, Heather. Thanks for watching. Is <laughs> that it? All right. Question of the day. Drum roll. Yes. <laughs> what is the question of the day? I'll read that. I'm going to let you answer at least. Is that, is that correct? Is that what you wanted to do? <laughs> nope. I don't know what it is yet. How to make money in investment real estate. How do you make money in investment real estate? You have to own some. Yes. You have to be in the market. You have to own it. So if you ever want to talk about investment property, if you're thinking about maybe buying a fixer or buying a duplex, um, you want to diversify your portfolio, um, you want to spend some of that Bitcoin money that you've made, Absolutely. Uh, we love to talk about real estate. Yep, that's it. You've got, to, you've got to own it. I mean, it's nice to go back and go, oh my gosh, if I would have bought this property a year ago, I would have been up 30%. But that's theoretical. That's a dream. If you would have bought that property and you were up 30%, that's a reality that we want everybody to achieve. Absolutely. Hey, Jill, how are you? Uh, we just finishing up here. We have a special birthday shout out today to one of our good friends and clients, Susan Whelan. It's her birthday today, so everyone wish her happy birthday and post on her page. So happy birthday to you, dear friend and client. Absolutely. Happy birthday, Susan. So that's today's show. That's it. So thank you for watching. We love talking about real estate. So you can visit us here. You can visit us at our website at GaryAndLisa.com. You can pick up the phone and call us because we love to talk to you. Uh, That's it. GaryLisa.com. Your real estate edge. Thanks for watching. Have a beautiful day. It's a wrap.